Hey, you guys, uh, welcome back to my con incredibly inconsistent YouTube channel. Um, hey, we're trying to fix that, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed, but we're trying to put out some new content, some fresh updated content for you guys. So um, I'm sitting back in my office here in Bentonville, Arkansas today, but I, uh, I've got a little bit of a treat with you guys. So I'm taking you guys here as soon as I'm done with this dumb intro back over to New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, we were in New York and Connecticut last week shooting a really beautiful wedding. We had the opportunity to go up to New Haven and just sort of scout the Yale campus a little bit. Um, we've got a couple of shoots coming up that we think that would be a really great location for. And so we're going to take you guys along on that scouting session and uh, and just kind of give you a little bit of a behind the scenes as to what we look for and how we look for locations when, uh, when we're away from home. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. If you like this content, if you'd like more of this content, do me a favor, uh, drop a, a comment below. And of course, if you'd subscribe to this channel, it would motivate me to probably put out more content. Thanks. I mean, all of the ways that the lines kind of hit are really neat, but also just the different contrast to the building in the back, the color is just, it's just interesting. I think if you were to just shoot it linear, it's kind of boring, but shooting into the corners are really cool. And there's also just a lot of different angles in here. So all of this wall is so um, like ornate that shooting directly into this could be really interesting. But in the back, it almost feels like a whole different era altogether. Like it looks like a castle up there. So being able to kind of contrast that, like I think I'd probably put a couple, maybe back in here somewhere. And so just allowing them to be honestly, probably a little bit more symmetric, like a little bit more kind of posed up right here would be neat and, and having him take up visually, having him take up the space that is mostly that wall and her take up the space that's mostly this wall right in here would be really neat. Even all of the depth that happens. I mean, and that's one of the things photographers sometimes I think they forget is that like we can create these really neat, deep images by not putting people up against flat objects but having flat objects in the background. So like just pulling them off the background and allowing all of that space to be a part of the shot. Um, I wish these chains weren't here, but we could get, even get around that by, by standing kind of in this foreground area and allowing that whole scene to be the background. I mean, that's a great frame. And then again, conceptually, like we always talk so much about composition being able to see a scene and compose into the scene instead of forcing some kind of weird composition. So like if I shoot, if I shoot down the middle right here, naturally I have sort of a middle aisle and I've got a sidewalk and then I have a sidewalk. So if I had my subjects from a couple or whatever on this sidewalk, just naturally they're already on the third. So I don't have to force some kind of like overly creative composition. I can just put them on the sidewalk where they naturally would be and they fit onto the third, you know, like comfortably. Um, let's try that. You guys want to try that? Let's try that. There's a puddle there. Just stand like, I don't know, right on the other side of the puddle. Right there. Uh, actually, I lied because I want you smaller. So take, can you take like three more steps back? Right there. So that, because that actually shows scale too. That's another thing we, I, I feel like people just almost forget is a lot of times people talk about how little people are in our, in our shots. But what I'm trying to do is actually just show the scale of the places that we're shooting. So like Raquel, go stand with him. Cause it's still a portrait of them like as a couple, but it shows how big and like neat all this is. Yeah, so, so face each other, like just, just turn your, yep, your body's kind of in tight. So I'm gonna tuck them into the third, but then I'm far enough away here that like, I don't know, the, um, the scale of the buildings is really powerful, but the composition still feels like everything kind of points to them. Like 
all the lines kind of go into them. And then kind of last thing here is that we're in, obviously it's a cloudy day, so we don't have really dynamic light. But even if we did have dynamic light out here, we'd be in protected light. So as long as it wasn't noon, like you'd, you'd have somewhere in here, you'd have an interesting shadow line. So all this is probably safe to shoot almost all day long. I would assume except for like morning would be, would be hard, but from, from probably three or four o'clock on, it would be beautiful all year round. Okay. okay. This is actually neat because people often, I think, ask us how we scout for locations to see movement that's really natural. <laughs> this is probably really, I feel like it should be obvious, but maybe it's not to people. So the, the easiest way to just like emulate natural movement is to watch the way people just naturally move. So like this space has so much depth and it's so dynamic and it's such a great spot to stop and shoot. But instead of asking people to like be static in a space like this, watching the pace that people just normally walk is, is, it, is a great way. So like you can see this guy who we have no idea who he is. So it's probably weird if he knows that I'm talking about him, but watching him just walk to us and the way that he kind of naturally meanders across sort of back and forth is exactly the way we would have a couple walk and the same pace that we would have them walk. And then what really has to be dynamic here then is like my positioning to them. So watch the way, like if I kind of chase in my position in relationship to her and how we fill up the space without her even really knowing how we're doing that. And that's the way that like I wanna, I want my shot in relationship to a couple or an individual is that my job is then to help fill up the space, right? So my camera fills the extra space up, but they're doing what would naturally just happen. Um, and it's one of the reasons I actually think that like probably my biggest uh, influences for our work isn't wedding photography, it's street photography. Cause I would rather watch the way people live on the street and then allow our couples to look like they're just sort of a part of that as opposed to me watching the wedding photography industry that in general seems like they just sort of break it all and try and make something that is beautiful all on its own, too perfect. Um, so, but then watching people that just like, they just stop and they see moments the same way that we do. Ideally, what they pay us the most for though is that we just see them first. So watch the way she walks into frame because the coolest thing, again, she has no idea that we're talking about her right now, but the coolest thing is the way that she walks in the frame, she gets larger in the space, just naturally, as she enters into our frame, which means that as we, as we shoot people and as we kind of engage with people, having them start further away allows us to have more environment in the shot. And then having them fill into the space a little bit more, coming closer into camera, allows them to be more of the priority in the exact same shot. Which means all we have to do scouting is find interesting perspectives and interesting like vanishing lines and just cool ways to see something. And then what we do is change how close or how far the subject is in order to make either them more of a priority or make the space more of a priority. And sometimes you kind of want both. Like sometimes we want a space like this to feel like, you know, our couple is just this tiny little piece of that puzzle. And then sometimes you want that couple to be the most important part of the whole frame. And you just want the background to be the background. And it's really easy to find locations where both are possible. But I think photographers sometimes get so excited to shoot one that they forget that the other is, is sort of the other, the other side of that page. All right, Joe, I'll go like, Go to that, that next light, light post. So while we have them get set up though, stacking architecture is another thing that like, that's probably hard for, for you to even see in camera, like in your camera, but I can show you a picture. But being able to see, I mean, this, this would be a, a truly hard thing to, to photograph for a couple, but it, it would be possible being able to see architecture behind architecture creates so much depth so that then if you were to put, you know, say, we, so we put a, a couple in here somewhere and shoot from back, back over there. Um, I'll have to show you the picture in order for you to actually sort of see what I'm talking about. 
but but you end up allowing this like powerful background to to, to become a part of the foreground um, and that's probably hard to visualize there but sort of allowing your focus to to pull in and out on, on architecture is such a neat way to to just see this stuff in a more dynamic way so i'm gonna have have our my friends who aren't i mean they are a couple but like they're not models or anything they're just hanging out with us today so okay so you guys just hold hands and kind of walk in and you'll see this i'm, I'm actually going to shoot it too because i might as well but you'll see what i mean like as as they're really far away obviously they're a very small part of the story which makes the environment feel like it's the priority and uh to me that often is really really cool but then as they get closer they become a more dominant part of that exact same environment and it's it's the reason why you guys are awesome it's the reason why photographers that only ever shoot wide open right at like 1.2 or 1.4 they miss the story because so often just what's immediately in focus isn't actually the coolest part of the story i mean a lot of times i think you almost want to want to stop down and learn how to shoot at three five or five six or crap f8 in order to see the world around you and then see like how your subjects are a big part of it so we just spent all that time talking about shooting this way and they were walking to us but then like watch how simple it is to just turn and now everything is is obviously completely inverted and regardless of the light of the day it's a whole different experience based on what the end back there is but then here's the the thing that i think again like sometimes we forget when we're scouting how special it can be to have one location that we could shoot both ways but then to be able to sort of pivot and have i don't know if you'd use the word maybe like micro locations like mini stopping points along the way where we can do frame in frame compositions right so like we have the symmetric composition and we have the symmetric on the, or we have the compositions on the thirds at these big shots. They're a perfect example right now. Again, like no idea who these lovely people are, but they're giving us everything that we kind of need to, to illustrate this because they're broken right down the middle. So we've got symmetry on both sides. But then one of my favorite little like break of compositions is using frames to, to pull contrast out. And you can just see as they kind of enter that, the way the door framing creates that sort of in interesting composition. So again, I mean, we don't even need real couples to, to scout locations. We don't need models. We don't need anybody really other than just people around us to go location scout and get inspired. The way that people just live in environments is more than enough for us to see the way that we, we would shoot with a, with a client. Okay, so we were, we were just talking, um, Jared and I were just sort of brainstorming like another simple thing. I mean, obviously I think it's probably fair to say that a lot of the stuff is very basic, but uh, sometimes I think it's the basic stuff that makes like beautiful photos really powerful. Cause it's something that you don't have to be like a brilliant artist to wrap your mind around. It's just something that like relates to all of us. So what we were saying is that, that this building, so many of the buildings around us have really like like ornate, really bold architecture. But this building just has a lot of like really repetitive elements to it. And it's sort of safe here. I mean, on the sidewalk, obviously we're like right in public as we do this. But if we come down just a little bit, you start, you start to kind of see the, uh, the repetition here. So again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but like a lot of people I think would see this and try and say like they need to shoot dead on to this because it's so ornate or beautiful. No, you're totally fine. Stop, you're good. But looking at like this as almost a vanishing line all in of itself and how cool that repetition is, um, it, it would be more than enough to set somebody off against it and use that to frame them. Um, so I, I think like one of, the, one of the fastest quick things I look for wherever we are, whether we're in like clearly in New England, which is beautiful, but um, even in the woods, or if we're, if we're in a, like a very natural location, think of um, like an orchard is this exact same concept, right? You have like rows of trees. Or if you are on a bridge and you've got like the uprights that hold up the bridge. Uh, or um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, that, that happens in a million places where it's the repetition that creates uh, maybe organization in the photo. And then again, once everything's super organized, you can have your couple do anything you want. They can dance or play or sway or walk through, honestly, just like these students are. Um, and as they walk through that repetition, the organization of the background just becomes something that kind of adds to the, the, the depth, the composition um, of, of your shots.